Welcome to the uh, seminar, a brief insight into Bazin, the maybe f world's first feature complete ECMI script edition 5 implementation by Barrow of Farbrush and me, Red of Mercury and Titan. So I'm, next slide. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to give you a, a, a brief introduction of what Bazin actually is. And then I will talk about uh, the core features of Besen, followed by its components, parser components and runtime components, and I will talk a bit about how Besen is uh, perceived by others. So, actually we have replaced any text uh, in the beam slides with, with uh, pictures of cute animals. So I'm going to, so because it's a lot of text which I'm having here and we don't want to uh, kill you with all, all the texts. <coughs> so, so, Bazin is an ECMA Script 5 edition implementation uh, written completely in Object Pascal. It's usable with Delphi 7 and Free Pascal. <coughs> it has a native code just in time compiler for a, a 32 bit and 64 bit AMD and X H6 uh, targets. And for other targets, it has a fa fallback uh, bytecode virtual machine for, for ARM and whatever. And why was Bazin written? This is a funny story, actually. A few years ago, I myself started writing a, a script engine which was object-oriented and, <coughs> and uh, had typeless vari variables. And so I was very happy uh, for my achievement and I told Bero about this. And uh, he was like, hey, I can do this better than this. And a few months later, he came back uh, with Bazin, and he completely pwned me in any way imaginable, because uh, uh, he is like feature complete ECMA script five. So ECMA script, you know it from your browser probably. Uh, most of you people know it as uh, JavaScript. <coughs> and ECMA script edition five uh, was the next edition after ECMA script edition three, because uh, version four was skipped and. Uh, ECMA script uh, 3.1 was renamed to action, uh, ECMA script 5. So what's uh, so hard about implementa implementing uh, ECMA script edition 5? As Bazin was one of the first, uh, the first engine who actually, which actually um, implemented all the features. It was feature complete before any other browser was. Uh, it's a very, very dynamic scripting language. Everything, almost everything is an, is an object and <coughs> objects can have properties which can be dynamically added or removed and you need a fast lookup for this and objects can also be freeze as a prototype chain and have you just forgotten? Okay, um, shall we go on? So the core features, we made a little graphic here, so <coughs> there's the, oh, you know, there's the, no, this, this is great, yeah. Um, thank you. What are you doing? Ah. Technology, it works. So, um, yeah, you can see here how it works. There's, first there's Alexa, which gives its uh, stuff to the parser, for, uh, which transforms it to, to an abstract syntax tree, uh, which is then optimized, then bytecode is generated, which is either uh, compiled uh, by JIT or put in a, in a uh, execu is executed in a virtual machine, uh, depending on what is, there's different use cases because when you directly when you directly want to execute your code you don't need to transform it into into uh, you don't need to compile it just in time and then execute it's again you can instantly parse it and uh, don't have to tra uh, translate it into jit because this will only take longer but if you have functions uh, those will be usually translated into jit um, and there's also the garbage collector and an uh, own uh, regular expression engine and I'm not sure if I'm going to talk about this too, but so let's go to the Alexa. Cute puppy. Uh, it's a simple handwritten 
uh, lexer from left to right, uh, top to bottom. It uh, takes any char set source as a char set, char set source text as input. Uh, everything is uh, UTF-8 internally. Lookup of keywords is done per binary search in a linear sorted string array. Uh, ident identifiers will be stored in a hash map for later lookups with, uh, for, for their identifier IDs. Um, and there is uh, integer and 64-bit double floating point numbers parsing with own routines and arbitrary precision arithmetic. Uh, regular expression parsing with test-wise pre-compiling of the patterns to find syntax errors in these regular expression patterns. And uh, outputs on the fly token stream for the parser. So we go to the parser. It's a cute owl. <coughs> And it, it reads a, a token stream from the Lexer, and it's also a handwritten recursive uh, bottom-up parser. It has a strict and non-strict mode. I personally never used not, uh, strict mode, so uh, uh, I cannot talk much about this, but... Uh, uh, um, so, and the parser finally builds this abstract syntax tree. Next which uh, basically is a, a, an object model of, of the code like this. And, and this is then first optimized. So if you have some uh, additions of constants, uh, you don't, you, uh, this addition is actually merged into one single constant. Uh, so uh, code is optimized. Also, uh, this is used for dead code elimination. If, for example, if you have a, a break somewhere and there's a code beneath it, uh, it will be removed. But only is it safe uh, in, in valid ECMI scripts context. Uh, and code transformations as well are, are uh, optimized if possible. So, the bytecode get generator. It takes a, a syntax tree as input and it generates register-based bytecode of it. Uh, it applies also very simple p uh, basic people optimizations and uh, tries to apply register-based copy propagation when possible. Uh, and it also tries to avoid dead stores. Oh, it's been, so uh, no, please wait. Ahem. So, the, the JIT compiler is uh, triggered by function code entry or global code entry. It takes uh, the bytecode as input, which was uh, produced before, and it outputs uh, native code for 32-bit for, uh, and 64-bit uh, targets. And it's a simple conventional uh, uh, JIT compiler, uh, which by appending native code templates for each bytecode uh, VM opcode. It's, uh, it's rather simple, but effective. Is there a small step between uh, to convert the first to assembler and then uh, using uh, an assembler to create? Uh, no, uh, 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 not, uh, assembler code is not, uh, not generated it's di directly uh, the, the corresponding uh, not byte code, but like uh, it's a real assembly byte code. <laughs> Machine code, thank you. Machine code, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, object structure IDs. Uh, ESMA script is an uh, incredibly, incredibly dynamic language by design. Uh, but in most cases, many objects are actually used in a way that resembles more structured object oriented classes. So. Many objects can have uh, often the same underlying structure underneath uh, with the same properties in the same order. And in these cases, we can cache and assign these ob object structure layers to object structure IDs, which, are, is, which is basically a 32-bit integer. And uh, <coughs> these uh, IDs uh, uh, records can be linked to, together to save memory space uh, for multiple objects. So if you have uh, a first base object, uh, which, which has a child, and this again has another child, and you can uh, directly access 
it this way and um, uh, these object structure IDs, uh, ID records are also garbage collected. They have a simple reference counter because there's no uh, recursion possible. So you, cannot, uh, you cannot build a recursion chain. So uh, um, this makes things easy. If the ID counter overflows, so if, if there's too many of them, um, uh, a cleanup is, is tried to, to remove your unused records and reassign everything. So, uh, so, uh, so, so we can see maybe the, uh, so the, the ID counter overflow is maybe uh, avoided. If this fails, inlining cache will be disabled and uh, a string hash map lookup will be used instead, which is a bit for, uh, slower, but uh, still works quite well. Um, um, oh, I don't. Uh, garbage collector. So, uh, if you ever have written, uh, if you know about garbage collector, this is a, 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 a tree color uh, garbage collector. So, there's white objects, black objects, and gray objects. White objects are objects which are candidates to free, so they can be removed. Black objects are objects uh, which are in use and uh, have no references to white objects, and gray objects are objects uh, which are reachable from other, uh, uh, from root reference objects, black objects, so to say, and, uh, uh, but objects, again, references by, by gray objects uh, that, that aren't being scanned yet, um, I don't know. Um. The gray objects are objects which are reachable from the root references, but the objects referenced by gray objects aren't being scanned yet. No? Okay. <coughs> so uh, the gray object list is initial, in, in, initialized to objects which are referenced directly at root level, and all other objects are initially placed in the whitelist object list. So objects can move from the white object list to the gray object list and from there to the black object list, but uh, it's never in the other direction. Otherwise, you would have corruption. And no black object can directly point to a white object because uh, that would be invalid. And the, the basic uh, idea of the algorithm is uh, that you pop an object incrementally from the gray object list stack and move it to the, to the black object list stack and move all the white objects uh, references to the, to the gray object list stack. And this is done repeatedly until the gray object list is empty. So you either have black or you have either have black or you have only white uh, items, and <clears throat> depending on the color, you can remove them. So you <clears throat> so you sweep all objects from white ob object list, and and then you have uh, removed all unused references. So. Inline caching, so business uh, uh, three inline caching states. First is monomorphic, which is uh, uh, a simple lookup if, uh, uh, um, <coughs> depending on to determine uh, uh, the, the type of the variable. Um, 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 so, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Um, it only caches our object property index item of an object structure record. Um, polymorphic inline caching caches up to eight object uh, index items of multiple structure records. So if you have different types, uh, this is used to, to have a faster lookup. And, and megamorphic is uh, basically brute force hash map lookup. And um, Monomorphic inline caching is done on JIT level, so it's uh, compiled into, into, the, into the JIT code. And if this fails, uh, uh, the bytecode VM opcode uh, dispatcher will be triggered from the JIT code. And the megamorphic lookup code is also only done in the VM. Um, so only the, the monomorphic inline caching is done by JIT directly. Oh. 
So, uh, Bison seen by others, but uh, first we, we will show you some screenshots of uh, a performance test. It's a simple um, <coughs> prime number uh, generator, I think, was it? Yeah, it's, it's finding primes. And uh, the first screenshot you see is uh, the Bison IDE itself. Um, and you can see it took 180, 138 milliseconds to find these amount of prime numbers. I cannot actually see the lines, but, but so, and then we have Google, what? Oh, oh. I think your notebook is broken. So then we have uh, Google Chrome, which is uh, slightly slower than Bison. It takes about uh, 20 milliseconds more for the same code. And Chrome is usually very fast. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Firefox is actually, uh, I th think it's a bit faster than, uh, than business, but it's uh, really, really a close call. Uh, Opera actually beats, uh, beats Bazen, which is uh, the only browser which d actually does it in, in, this, in this performance test. Excuse me? Uh, uh, that depends. Um, there's a, uh, sorry, it's my little tolle list of answers. Uh. Um, browsers actually uh, partially implement, it, implement uh, ECMA script 5. Uh, there's only, not all features are available. There's a feature uh, list overview of all the uh, ECMA script 5 engines, which we will open right now as soon we have some access to the internet. So uh, I should probably stand up for this. I hope I don't will create a, a feedback uh, blah when I step into the field of the boxes. So, um, uh, this is Internet Explorer 8, 9, uh, Firefox uh, 3, Firefox 4. Um, uh, Safari is the next, and this is actually Bazen, and you can see it's the only uh, uh, only entry which oh, sorry uh, which has everything green, everything is supported, even strict mode, uh, which is uh, the only difference between the compatibility compatibility between Firefox. Uh, Oh, wait. Why is there strict mode? Ah, OK. Ah, it was uh, Firefox uh, 3 before. I see. You, you confused me. Sorry. Uh, so uh, Firefox 4 is the uh, second, uh, as this, uh, was second when it came to a full feature complete ECMA script 5 implementation. So current browsers actually uh, are slowly uh, catching up. Oh yeah, Safari is uh, actually uh, uh, very slow, but uh, if you think that it couldn't get any slower, there's always Internet Explorer 9. <laughs> so uh, even if, uh, so. <coughs> so you can see uh, this is, uh, that, that Bazen actually does uh, seem to perform quite well uh, regarding to other browsers. So yeah. Just to get, give you an idea how, how, how good it performs or not. And uh, you might have read about it that uh, there has been um, a, a nearly a war been going on between the different browser vendors who produces the fastest the JavaScript. And uh, I think Internet Explorer has not won it. So we also have a, a video of Someone from Google, I forgot his name, actually, Mark Miller. He's uh, been talking about JavaScript, and let's just uh, listen to what he has to say about Bazin. Which is the uh, JavaScript interpreter. Well, it's, it's, it, can, it can run either interpretively or it can compile to bytecodes. But the, the JavaScript, I'm going to just call it an interpreter, that runs on top of the JVM. Um, uh, uh, that has a full implementation 
of the new ECMAScript 5 APIs, so all of this attribute manipulation, including object.freeze, um, it has, as far as I know, a full implementation of all that. It's at least feature complete in the sense that all of the APIs are there. Uh, I don't know how fully tested it is uh, because the, the ECMAScript 5 tests themselves are only now um, accumulating and they're, they're, um, they're, they're very far from complete at the moment. Um, uh, but Rhino does not yet have uh, ECMAScript 5 strict mode He's actually talking and about therefore Rhino does not yet awesome. have the repair of scoping or the repair of encapsulation. Um, uh, um, uh, other than Rhino, as far as I know, all of the other use of JavaScript outside the browser, are uh, all those uses, as far as I know, are making use of JavaScript engines that were written for the browser. So Node.js using V8. Um, uh, I know that I think that there's some using the, well, you know, I think that for each of the browser engines, I think there's somebody using it on the server side. Uh, now, I should mention here, the first complete um, implementation of ECMAScript 5 uh, was outside the browser. Uh, it was done independently. It's, it's called Besen, B-E-S-E-N. It was done in Object Pascal. Um, and it looks great. Um, and it was, you know, the, the, it, it was tremendously early. It was way ahead of everybody else. And it just sort of popped up on the list one day with this announcement that, you know, hey, there's this, we, I just, you know, quietly did this complete implementation of the ECMAScript 5 spec in Object Pascal, and it seems to work. Okay, now, on browser adoption, um, uh, let's just sort of, let's do the roll call. Um, so, um, the, I'll, just, I'll just speak for the so this was Mark Miller from Google uh, talking about Bazin and other uh, ECMA script engines outside of the browser. So um, actually, we are already through. So do you have any questions? It's, uh, I will try to, to answer them my best. Uh, as Bero actually knows all of it, and I am only a, a user of, of his engine. Um, any questions so far? Will it be possible uh, to use it? Is it possible uh, to use it uh, as a replacement for Lua, for example? Uh, yes. For coding somehow? Yes, uh, I, I use it myself extensively, and uh, it has a really, really easy uh, integration. So if you write an object, you have only have to inherit, uh, inherit it from, uh, from a Bazin object. And all published properties and functions are actually directly accessible uh, in, in your script. So you only have to write your class, like usually, and, and you can instantly use it in, in, in your script, which is, uh, which is very, very nice. It has very little overhead to, to implement new stuff for, for, your, for your project. And it also is possible to, um, to, to Manipulate uh, directly in the memory somehow that I uh, have uh, a list of uh, 3D objects and I want to, to uh, um, steer it um, via ECMAScript. Well, for this uh, particular case, you would have to write your own wrapper. So you have, for instance, an object which gives you back whatever you, information you want, and then you can maybe even write more wrappers in, in, in ECMA script. This is actually what I'm doing myself. I write a simple uh, basic class, which does, uh, which is a wrapper, and then I write a more extended class, which only uses the basic wrapper functions in JavaScript, uh, ECMA script myself. This uh, has a, a advanced. Uh, this, this is very easy because if you have bugs, you can always f fix them in the in the script code and not have to recompile your your code again and again. And this is really really easy for for prototyping or whatever whenever you, you have, need to get stuff done fast. <coughs> Thank you. Hey, what's, uh, uh, the first question might be redundant uh, because it was a little late. So um, what is the license it's released under? Is, it, is the source code is available, I guess? From uh, the source code there? is available. Uh, maybe we can. 
Uh, actually, I don't know which license it is exactly, but I'm pretty sure uh, Bero will now show you the uh, uh, license the file. So <laughs> Another might be redundant question is: uh, is, is implemented in C? Uh, no, it's not implemented in C. It's in, it's done in Object Pascal. What? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So you uh, this was mentioned at, uh, at the beginning of the talk. So yes, yeah, uh, saw, uh, this is uh, one of the things that makes a uh, reason kind of special. What's the memory footprint? Max? What? What's the memory footprint? I would have omitted this question if it was uh, on the JVM or whatever. Uh, memory footprint is rather <laughs> small. It actually depends uh, on 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 your project. But uh, uh, if you just if you just uh, implement the, uh, uh, if you just use the, the parser and uh, with no additional uh, stuff around it, you will be. Uh, there's not actually much memory uh, or uh, memory used. If that was your question, or uh, what are you doing actually? So, ah, so uh, Bero just uh, started his uh, uh, Bezen shell, which is actually a, a is a script shell. So you can enter any kind of JavaScript, and it will be uh, executed directly. And now he will be showing his mad coding st skills to to show what's possible with this. Uh, this is a strict note, as you can see, and it's actually being very strict. Uh, I think it's really interesting, perhaps for others, uh, to know that um, you are still working on uh, a WebGL implementation for it, uh, for the engine. Uh, well, yeah, this is another use case. Uh, he, he mentioned uh, uh, WebGL implementation. So, uh, Bero is uh, working on this. Uh, do you have a demo for this, too? That's what we that's what we really really need. Yeah. Ah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Good. Another question, now that you know really what's going on inside, are there any best practice hints or something to avoid to improve performance or memory footprint, whatever? Uh, well, uh, what I've been trying to do is um, uh, um, to write some not, I wouldn't call it a program, but stuff which all works uh, in my in my own implementation of um, uh, uh, in my own program using Bazin and in a in a browser. So if you use a browser, you uh, have to write your own wrapper classes uh, which just use uh, HTML and whatever you need uh, to to simulate what your native objects you implemented uh, with Bazin. Uh, provides the same functionality and my personal best experience is there that whenever you manipulate uh, the document object model uh, uh, in the browser, things will get really, really slow. Uh, Canvas, uh, if you use Canvas, uh, it will be uh, significantly faster because it's actually meant to be fast. But um, uh, this is, if you want to do stuff like this, uh, this is my advice I can give you. Okay, and another question is uh, debugging JavaScript is usually quite tricky. So are there any tools or stuff which helps in debugging or uh, monitoring script? Also here my personal debugging skills are that I have a, a debug out function. Uh, so I basically just put an alert between my code which does not work. So th there's of course a full try catch uh, uh, exception handling within Java JavaScript. And if you don't catch it uh, yourself in your in your script, uh, 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 Bazin will actually throw an exception within 
uh, the native code. Uh, so, so you, you have uh, uh, your means to, to debug it. If you have native functions, you can always uh, put a breakpoint in there. And if it's triggered by the script, you can uh, trace uh, through your own code. So debugging is possible. But uh, uh, I don't think Bero has written a full uh, JavaScript debugger yet. Yet. I'm not sure what Bear was doing here, but um, ah, so uh, actually this is some bug in Firefox 4, which is uh, obviously showing off in a test case of ECMA script 5. Yeah, I'm still not seeing. Can you can you like mine it? Oh, up there. <laughs> So yeah, and uh, have you already uh, started in your own? Of course you have. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, what's the the use case for compiling your uh, ECMI scripting code? Uh, is there an, any performance? Um, uh, um, when or is it just that you have your executable that you can deliver to your to your user? Well, uh, of course, there's not a performance gain when you uh, have a language like this when you can write native code which is directly uh, converts into assembly. Of course, there's a lot of tricks uh, going on which makes uh, the code go fast, but it's still no reason to to implement your 3D rendering engine in JavaScript and, and use it there and uh, instead of writing it in, in native assembler code. So um, it's not really, uh, you shouldn't use uh, uh, a basin in your projects if only for speed, but for, for flexibility because it really gives you the ultimate flexibility to do whatever you want. You can, if you, <coughs> you can change, uh, if your program's based on, on basin, you have just the flexibility with any, like with any other uh, scripting language, but this time it's JavaScript. Um, uh, is it possible uh, inside Bazen uh, to access objects from Object Pascal? Uh, yes, uh, I think you went here when I mentioned it. Uh, so. Uh, if you write an object and you want it to have to be access accessible uh, within your script, you, uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, all published properties are, are, are received via RTDI, all properties and, and functions. And as soon as, as they are published, they will be accessible in the script as well. So it's really really straightforward uh, to to implement your own own objects and functions. Okay, another question. Uh, I think it was already asked, but I didn't hear the answer. Uh, can you show the license file or tell what license this is under? Ah, license file. Actually, there's more than one license. It's either open source or ask Bero. <laughs> So, um, please wait a moment. So it's AGPL3 and uh, his own license. So you either have to uh, 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 publish your whole project as open source, just like uh, Bazin, or you have to uh, get in touch with Spiro and uh, talk about licensing options if you want closed source applications. So any more uh, questions about licensing? <laughs> okay then. Is 
there some API documentation yet? And uh, is it possible probably to show a glance of it, like how the API looks? In, in a bit like uh, I don't think that there's like a that. documentation. Embedding, and oh, injecting sorry. objects and all that. Uh, there's no documentation yet. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, uh, this, I, do we have any uh, uh, example source code here which uses Bayesian? That would be really neat. Okay, so here we see an, uh, the file object which uh, implements some basic functions for reading and writing in files. And you can see it's derived from a TB's native object. And you can see the published properties and functions and procedures uh, <coughs> which are just uh, defined in the, in the published uh, Section and if you if in the constructor they are they are automatically uh, retrieved via RDDI and there's no more overhead than 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 this. There's uh, also some functions for for constructor initialize object and finalize objects. Those are called when new instances of uh, of the class are are getting getting created uh, within Bazen. So. But most, for most, uh, this, is, this is only uh, initialization code for, for the class uh, code itself. It's opening a file here. And um, scroll mal runter, wo du jetzt mit dem Kram registrierst. The only uh, overhead you have to, to access your, your object in the, in, in, in the script parser is that you have to register your object type, which you can see. So there's uh, native functions are, are, are registered here, and native objects like the uh, arch in this line. So <coughs> this is how um, you set up Basing yourself, so it's not really uh, uh, hard to to do it, but there's still no documentation left except for this example source code. It's uh, supplied uh, on the side of, on the ABI of Object Pascal, right? Like Excuse me. It, it pretty much relies on the ABI of Object Pascal. Exactly. Binary interface, so you would have to write wrappers for it if you wanted to use it with another language, like C or whatever. Yeah, uh, writing a wrapper would be uh, not or so like trivial, I think. Or writing some adapter that adapts the object Pascal ABI. Uh, of course you could. What? Or writing some adapter that generically adapts yeah. the ABI of object Pascal. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? <laughs> okay. So. Okay, uh, so uh, then, so, uh, then some last words for me. So um, you can download. I'm pretty sure you will be able to download uh, the the slides that I used, uh, which I used to read uh, all the all the text that I didn't understand. <laughs> um, um, so if you have um, more questions about Basin, you can always uh, you can get it on this side soon. And. And thank you for listening. Mm.